In 1770, a young Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and his father took a trip to Rome to visit the Sistine Chapel for Holy Week, an important religious festival for Roman Catholics, and through a series of inadvertent events, Mozart ends up stealing a piece of music from the Vatican. So, how did a 14-year-old Mozart end up stealing one of the most cherished pieces of music from the Catholic Church? It all starts about a century and a half before Mozart's time. In the 1630s, a young priest and composer who worked in the Vatican named Gregorio Allegri wrote a piece of music called the Miserere. It was specifically written for the Tenebrae service that was held in the Sistine Chapel during Holy Week. Most of the music during the Tenebrae service was plain chant, or what some people would call Gregorian chant today. A very simple and unornamented type of music used in church services at the time. However, the Miserere was written in a much more modern style with more complex harmonies. In plain chant, all of the voices sing the same melody. Here's an example of a Kyrie, a common plain chant used in the Catholic Mass. The Miserere was written in a more Renaissance style, with the different voices singing different parts. Let's take a listen.
The text of the Miserere is based on Psalm 51. Allegri alternates between a five-voice choir, a soloist, and a four-voice choir for each of the lines of the psalm. This pattern repeats for the entire piece until the last line, where both of the choirs sing the last phrase together. The music is also repeated, the five-voice choir singing the same notes for each of their lines, and the four-voice choir singing the same notes for each of theirs. The only differences might be slight changes in rhythm so that the words line up better with the music. The only time Allegri changes the music is on the last phrase, where the two choirs join together. One of the most beautiful parts of the Miserere comes from what's not written in the music. Let's listen to another part of the piece and try to listen for notes the choir is singing that are not written on the page. If you noticed here and here, there are embellishments or ornamentations that the choir sings that are not written in the music. These musical flourishes were the closely guarded secret of the Sistine Chapel Choir. They were never written down and only passed down from choir to choir over the years. The current pope at the time, Pope Urban VIII, liked the Miserere so much that he instituted a ban on sharing the piece of music. No one was allowed to copy the music or perform it outside of the Sistine Chapel. The penalty for breaking this ban was excommunication from the church. Excommunication basically means that you were kicked out of the church. You were no longer able to participate in the church and were shunned, for the most part, by other church members. Since the Miserere was only performed two days out of the entire year, and since there was a ban on copying or sharing the music, this only increased the music's popularity and mystery. Soon, traveling to Rome to see the Miserere performed at the Sistine Chapel became a must-see event for music lovers and the church faithful. By the time Mozart came around, there were only three authorized copies of the Miserere in existence. One went to the Holy Roman Emperor Leopold I, the second went to the King of Portugal, and the last went to Padre Martini, a musician and composer who was also a Franciscan friar of the Catholic Church. This brings us to the now famous heist from the Sistine Chapel. The story goes like this. Mozart and his father just so happened to arrive in Rome during Holy Week. So, what does a young musical prodigy and his self-promoting father do in Rome during Holy Week? They go see one of the most mysterious music performances of their time, the Tenebrae service at the Sistine Chapel. Young Mozart was so enamored by the Miserere that he started memorizing and transcribing it in his head. Later, when he and his father returned to their lodgings, he began to write it down. Now, since the Miserere is performed twice during Holy Week, Mozart had another chance to hear the performance, and he took full advantage of the opportunity. He returned for the second performance to correct any mistakes he may have made from the first performance. Of course, Mozart wasn't able to bring paper and quill into the Sistine Chapel, but given his musical abilities, it would not be impossible for him to hear the music and write it down later. In fact, most professional musicians today can do the same thing. It's called melodic dictation, or harmonic dictation. This is the process by which a musician hears a piece of music and transcribes it note for note without ever having heard or seen the music before. It's not an easy task, but with the right training, it can be done. So how do we know this actually happened and is not just another larger-than-life Mozart anecdote? We have a first-hand account of the incident from Mozart's father. In a letter to family back home, 
Mozart's father writes, You have perhaps often heard of the famous Miserere in Rome, which is so highly esteemed that the performers in the chapel are forbidden, on pain of excommunication, to carry off a single part of it, to copy it, or to give it to anyone. But we have it. Wolfgang has written it down, and we would have sent it to Salzburg in this letter if it were not necessary for us to be there to perform it. Moreover, as it is one of the secrets of Rome, we do not want it to fall into other hands. Not only does Mozart's father know about the theft, but he also knows the consequences if they were caught with an unauthorized copy of the music. So what happens next? Was Mozart kicked out of the Catholic Church for his transgression? Well, soon word got out that Mozart copied the Miserere by ear when he was visiting Rome, and not long after, the Pope summoned Mozart back to the Vatican, and in July of 1770, Pope Clement XIV did what he thought was necessary. He made Mozart a Knight of the Vatican by bestowing upon him the Order of the Golden Spur. The Order of the Golden Spur is conferred upon those who have rendered distinguished service in propagating the Catholic faith, or who have contributed to the glory of the Church either by feat of arms, by writings, or by other illustrious acts. I'm not sure which category Mozart falls into, but the Pope was so impressed by the feat that he decided to congratulate him instead of punish him. And here is a portrait of Mozart wearing his Order of the Golden Spur. Soon after, the Miserere was being published in England. Music historians still debate whether this first publication came from Mozart's transcription or not. Regardless of its origin, the music became very popular. And the Miserere continues to be performed and recorded to this very day thanks in part to a young Mozart who couldn't get enough of Gregorio Allegri's music. Thank you for watching. Do you know of any other fun Mozart stories? Let me know in the comments below. A special thank you to my patrons on Patreon who help support this channel. If you would like to become a patron and get access to patron-only updates, check out the Patreon link below. Or if you want to keep watching videos, check out this one.